So, I'm your friendly neighborhood Jag, Cap Circle. Uh, we're gonna go through a couple presentations. I'll try and make them quick. Um, I ended up, we ended up some technical difficulties, so these are not my slides. So, uh, we'll bear with me a little bit. Uh, I do have one quick announcement from Sergeant Chapman back here. He says that uh, there are some will worksheets in the back for anyone who didn't get one, so you can pick them up on your way out if if you need one. All right. So we're going to go over the law of armed conflict, and we're also going to go over your annual ethics. And you'll be getting these again before you get in theater. You'll get a more specific in theater one later on. So uh, if you don't catch it here, you'll catch it there. We'll go ahead. And, so the training objectives here, let's switch around to this other side. You want to, we're trying to understand what the law of war is, the legal basis for it, Identify the law of basic principles. Really, we're looking at military necessity, unnecessary suffering, discrimination, uh, and, or distinction, uh, proportionality, and apply the nine law of war standards. So, again, I apologize. So I'm reading off the slides a little bit, but we'll get through it. So, where does it come from? It comes from a, a bunch of countries getting together. You got the, the Hague Conventions, Geneva, Geneva Conventions, various international treaties. So it's where these countries get together and they say, hey, we're going to bind ourselves to these rules. And um, so it reflects the international legal values. And that, that's what it is. It's everybody coming together saying, here's what we think is right. And why do we need one? Well, it helps commanders and the soldiers in the mission accomplishment. How does it do that? Well, it sets the standards. It gives certain things to expect, but it also um, protects both sides, right? It protects everybody. Um, and you're protecting not only the soldiers, you're protecting civilians as well. So it protects against unnecessary suffering and damage. And uh, we want to treat everybody humanely, help, uh, you know, help non-combatants, wooden, sick, all those good things. Now, why do you need to follow the law of war? Well, first and foremost, it's because you know you can go to jail and all those other kind of fun things. Um, but it gives us discipline. It helps buddies. So every time somebody violates the law of war, it gives the enemy something to hang their hat on. It also makes the enemy more likely to violate the law of war against us. Um, so that's the reciprocal adherence, right? So the enemy is likely to follow it if we're following it. And the more we break it, the more likely they are to break it and treat us poorly, treat our civilians poorly, treat our wounded poorly. So, and it's the right thing to do, right? Have some moral courage and do that right thing. So it's the law I can send you to jail. Law of war, the basic principles, we're gonna hit on Military necessity, that, that underlies a lot of this, right? You gotta have a milita military necessity for your actions. We don't, we wanna avoid unnecessary suffering. Discrimination or distinction, we'll, we'll talk about these, and, and then proportionality. Go ahead. So your military necessity, targeting analysis. So when, when you're figuring out your targets, um, it refers to the use of force. Not otherwise prohibited by the law of war, which is necessary for the complete submission of the enemy, enemy as soon as possible. So, is it a military necessity to target for this? That gets into things like hospitals, mosques, those kind of things. And uh, that's also gets in under the pr principle of discrimination as well, which we'll get into. But you have to have a military necessity for this action. Destructive force must be directed at legitimate military targets. That's that's really what you take from this. There has to be a military necessity uh, for what you're doing. You can't be doing it for uh, any other reason other than it helps the objective, helps you win the war. You want to avoid unnecessary suffering, and um, it's forbidden to take an action on the basis in order to try to cause unnecessary suffering. So that gets at some, some uh, actions some soldiers have taken um, 
uh, against civil, very civilian personnel. They were actually going out to attack the civilian personnel. They were trying to cause them suffering. And um, there really, there's not a particular military necessity there either. All right. Your discrimination or distinction. So discrimination, soldiers have to distinguish, right? You gotta discriminate what's a combatant, what's a non-combatant, you gotta make those decisions. And um, what are military objectives and what's protected property? That's what I was getting at with, uh, if you're talking about various religious sites or uh, UNESCO, um, what's that, heritage sites, um, and hospitals, those kind of things. Distinction, a soldier has, must adhere to the customary international law obligation to engage only in military operations where the effects distinguish between the civilian population objects and the combatants and military objectives. So force is solely directed against combatants and military objectives. Um, there is such thing as collateral damage, um, and that is part of the calculus, but we are uh, directing it at the military objective. So proportionality, loss of civilian life and damage to civilian property, which is collateral damage, uh, must not be excessive in relation to the concrete and direct military advantage gained by an attack. So um, if you're trying to take out one guy, he's military objective, absolutely, you know, he's a military leader, and you want to take him out. You know he's in this city. You drop an atom bomb on him. You know that's not going to be proportional. The ten law of war standards, soldier rules. So fight on the combatants. I mean these are, these are common sense, right? Uh, treat humanely all who suffer or are captured. That's you know uh, if you got a POW, speed them to the rear. You get them out of there. Uh, don't kill or torture detained personnel. Collect and care for the wounded. We take care of everybody. Um, do not attack protected persons and protected places. Now, destroy no more than the mission requires. If at any time anybody has any questions, shout them out, raise your hand, do something. Uh, but destroy no more than the mission requires. So we're not out there to flatten a country if we're in war. We're out there to do what needs to be done. To win the war. Now, treat all civilians humanely. Though um, not everybody's in that war. Respect private property and possessions. Don't steal things. Don't loot. Rape, pillage, plunders. Not a good idea. Um, prevent law of war violations. So, don't let your buddies go out and do it. And then, if you do see them do it, you got to report them. You got to stand up, have that moral fiber and report. So fight only combatants, pretty self-explanatory, except sometimes it's unclear a little bit, right? Who's a combatant? Um, anyone engaging in hostilities and armed conflict on behalf of a party to the conflict. So maybe a person declared hostile. Or persons engaged in a hostile act or demonstrating hostile intent. So you have someone who's a civilian who's just walking down the street. Um, you know what? Let's say they're even carrying a rifle. They're not necessarily a combatant, right? You can't just shoot them because they're carrying a weapon. Um, now, let's say they're wearing the enemy uniform. That's a different story. They're a declared combatant. Um, inherent right to self-defense. ROE principle. So, you guys have a right to self-defense. Somebody raises a weapon on you, you have the right to self-defense. Um, it's going to be in your rules of engagement, and can a command and command can limit that to a certain degree, right? But it is going to be part of your rules of engagement that you'll get in theater. Yep. I would have a question, sir. Uh, so, say you, your fellow soldiers. I always have to say, if I saw you raping or robbing or pillaging, you're going to get a bullet in your back for me. Now, what is that issue a fellow soldier for doing wrong? So, I mean, if you you shoot them for looting? Well, 
probably a problem. Somebody. You shoot them for raping, you know what? You might be defending someone. You're defending a civilian, right? You know, that's going to be a judgment call. I'd be careful. But at the same time, yeah. Uh, it's, you, you are defending civilians. Um, make sure you're doing so. Uh, use your good judgment. Be ready to defend it because there's going to be you know, significant questions there. And I, there may be opinions on both sides. And I can't give you an exact answer how it would come out. Right. I mean, I'd be careful what you defend, though, because if, if you're using deadly force uh, in the self-defense context, what you're looking at is, or defense of self or others, what you're looking at is either um, you're trying to save someone from either death or serious bodily injury. That's why I said rape. There's quite a possibility that that's going to be found serious bodily injury, right? If they're losing their watch, probably not. So, anyone who's engaged in a hostile act against you, though, you got that right to self defense. Anyone just said, uh, demonstrating hostile intent. Now, hostile act, again, keep it proportionate. If you're using deadly force, you got to be talking. Death or serious bodily injury. Right? So, rule two treat humanely all who surrender or are captured. Follow the five S's uh, and T. I don't remember exactly what all those are, but it's there's speed of the rear in there somewhere. Um, follow what your rules of engagement are, right? is really what the answer is. Um, and just provide them humane treatment, you know. Don't uh, deprive them of water, don't beat them, don't whatever else, just move them out. Oh, oh, eh. all right. Respect and protect. So, they're in your custody, they're your responsibility. Um, and that's, that's the bottom line on this one. Yeah, you kind of think of how, if you were captured, how you'd want to be treated. Hey, there's the five messages. So you search no silence, segregate, safeguard, speed, tag. Um, you're gonna get more training on exactly what they how they want you to do these things in theater. So we're gonna go ahead and go past this one. Treat humanely all let's see, provide humane treatment. So that's what I was talking about. Don't deprive them of water, uh, don't leave them out in the rain. Uh, I mean if you're out in the rain, great, they can be out in the rain. But uh, give them basic hygiene, those kind of things. All right. Yeah, don't strip them naked. Um, so you protect them from retaliation, retribution. So protect them against your other soldiers too. Let's say somebody's mad. Back them down. Um, protect them from public humiliation, curiosity. You don't need. Um, Well, respect the person, honor cultural beliefs, um, within reason, right? To the extent that you can uh, keep it from being a security risk. Respect uh, what they ask for. Again, like I said, bottom line, treat them like you want to be treated. Now, international domestic law applies to federal employees and contractors, DOD civilian employees and contractor personnel. Um, Non-DOD civilian employees and contract personnel engaged in handling or interrogation of detainees. So um, this isn't just for soldiers, but we can skip that for you guys. Females will be treated with respect. So protected from sexual assault, you know, and uh, they're entitled to respect for their persons and their honor to the extent you can. If you have a female there, um, you know, make the accommodations. Um, Maybe have, if you're doing a search on them, have a female do the search if you can. But operational necessity, uh, keep that in, always accomplish mission first, but treat them with respect. All right. 
Don't kill or torture detain personnel. I'm not sure what else there is to say about that. Um, it's crime. It's uh, just basically wrong. Uh, and humane treatment is the minimum standard. Minimum standard, you know, you can always treat them better if you feel like it, but at least meet the minimum. Let the trained interrogators do that interrogations. So as far as that goes, um, to the extent whatever your mission is. Um, if your mission is to get information, get information. If your mission isn't, speed with the rear. Um, slide. Collect and care for the wounded. So the law order requires this. Once they're out of the fight, take care of them. That's simple. Um, triage the most seriously wounded, whether friendly or enemy, and safeguard for further attack. Hey, so case study. 2004, Mercy Killer GI gets three years. So a US soldier was sentenced three years in prison after pleading guilty of killing a severely wounded Iraqi teenager. He's injured, take care of him, don't shoot him. Um, so there's, uh, you can read what else he received. Um, pleaded guilty to one count of unpremeditated murder. One count of soliciting another soldier to commit unpremeditated murder. So on August 18th, um, they killed a 16 year old Iraqi male. And it was found in a burning truck with severe abdominal wounds, stained during clashes in uh, uh, Baghdad, and they were in an impoverished neighborhood, and um, they shot him. So, take care of people to the extent you can. Don't actively, don't actively kill anybody that you don't need to. You know, who's not a combatant, who's in the fight. All right. Um, obligation to collect and protect the wounded extends to the dead. Don't desecrate bodies. Don't pee on them. Uh, you all remember that case, I'm sure. So, um, like. Protected persons and or protected places. Uh, protected persons, intentional targeting, generally prohibited. Uh, so, these are going to be your, your Red Cross kind of people, right? You don't intentionally target them. Um, protected places, civilian objects protected from international attack. So there's, like I said, UNESCO has designated certain uh, places, um, historical heritage sites or something, I can't, I can't remember what it is exactly. But uh, they've said, these are places you cannot attack. Um, and because they're important for culture and everything else. You can't attack hospitals. Um, now, there is a military purpose, military necessity analysis. This will be done by your JAG, most likely. Most likely, not anyone here. Um, but it might be done by commanders, right? Let's say you're, getting, you're receiving fire out of a church. Then you're going to do a military purpose, military necessity analysis as to whether or not you have a military purpose to attack that? You're receiving fire. Yeah, I got a military purpose. I'm receiving fire from uh, enemy combatants. Is there a military necessity that you go through that building? Maybe. That's going to be an analysis. All right. So don't attack medical personnel, facilities, or equipment. Do not attack people, vehicles, places marked with these symbols. Any of those three. Don't do it. I think that's enough. Oh. Less than, so hospitals, medics, or medical vehicles can lose their status if they're used improperly. So don't ask if you, if we got one uh, with a Red Cross on the side of it, don't ask to use it. If it's a medical vehicle, don't ask to use it for a military purpose because um, that puts our wounded soldiers in danger for one thing. They, they might lose their status as a protected um, uh, vehicle. And not only that, the enemy might not trust it later on and might just start attacking. So, don't do it. Destroy no more than mission requires. Um, minimum, so you're, keep it localized as, as much as you can. That doesn't mean you, you are, let's say, you're receiving fire out of, out of a building that you have to respond in kind. 
or something, you know, you're shooting a small arms fire, you can still, you know, target the building and then blow the whole thing up. But you're going to want to take into account what's the collateral damage likely to be, and you're not wantonly destroying property, right? Treat all humane, uh, civilians humanely. All civilians must be respected. Um, don't target them, like I said. Um, they have to abstain from hostile acts too. If they're attacking you, they're entering, or they become a combatant, no longer a civilian. Um, you don't have to stop your mission, be careful. You, you see a hurt civilian along the way, you can continue with your mission. You don't have to stop. Um, but if you can, do so. All right. You can't discriminate, you know, you can't make any kind of adverse distinction based on race, religion, sex, any protected class. Um, treat them all the same, treat them fairly, treat them uh, how you'd want to be treated, um, or how you want your family treated. So, don't take hostages, don't degrade, uh, treat them uh, poorly. Um, I think we're good on that. Respect private property and possessions. Don't steal, don't loot, don't just dis destroy people's things because you can't. Um, and taking a personal property, so sometimes you might need something, right? Taking personal property for immediate military necessity or emergency is permissible. Let's say you guys, for some reason, folks are out on a patrol and they are entirely out of water. They've been out of water for two days and uh, they come across a place, there's water there. You know what? There's a military necessity there. It's an emergency. Um, but issue a receipt for property taken when possible so that your friendly neighbor at Jack can give them a claim. Um, War trophies, don't do it. Don't steal, okay? Um, they, the guy faced it was, I don't know the outcome of this case. Uh, at this point, we probably should have it on there, but uh, he was facing up to 15 years in prison for, uh, Armed robbery because he he took an Iraqi Sheikh's sport utility vehicle at gunpoint. He said, "Get out!" and they took it. Armed robbery. All right. Permit law war violations. So all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. That's that moral fiber. That that great quote. Stand up. Be counted. Stop bad things. That's what we do here. All right. Well, and I should play that back one. I just want to see. Is that? Yeah, it is. So, how do you all know uh, Eli? Vietnam. Um, so, horrendous thing. And if you ever watch anything on it, one of the, one of the big things out of it is most people did not stand up. To what they do as well. And so, um, if you ever get a chance, watch this. Anyway, go ahead. Report law of war violations. So, you report, even if you just suspected it might be, report it up, whether it's enemy or friendly. Report them up. Um, and uh, you can report it to the chain of command, your judge advocate, your inspector general, chaplain, all those. Um, it's your duty to know law of war uh, and follow the rules. You're ordered to, act, uh, to commit a criminal act or law of war violation. You are under an obligation to refuse that order. If you know it is absolutely a uh, criminal act, if you know absolutely this is a law of war violation, refuse. Now, make sure you're right, but uh, that is your responsibility. So, because I was just following orders and not a defense. Right. So, know it, understand it, it's your duty. 
only target things that are military necessity and uh, do so while in a way that avoids unnecessary suffering, do so that in a way that minimizes collateral damage, um, make sure you're discriminating among targets to make sure you're hitting military targets up and uh, places that have a military necessity to go through. Um, use proportional force. So again, like I said, if you're receiving small arms fire, it doesn't mean you have to respond with small arms fire. It means you have to respond in a, in a way that quickly and in the most contained fashion neutralizes the enemy force. Um, follow the soldier rules. Questions on this one? All right, I think you've probably all heard this one, that one before and um, you'll hear it again. So we'll go ahead and uh, skip on to the next one. We'll try and get through it. I know you guys have been dying throughout this entire day. I apologize. Um, it's a bunch of slides. But good news is that uh, I managed, so the, the first brief on this ethics one that I was given, it was 133 slides. I decided that you probably didn't want to hear the 133 slide one. 